Okay, here's the fucking, here's the dealio. So basically, um, so basically what we're going to be doing, we're going to be ranking every operator in Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege as of year seven, season two. I did one of these like, I don't know, like nine months ago, but you know, a lot of ch has changed. And, um, I'm also going to take into consideration the buffs and nerfs coming to this season. So first thing, fir first things first, uh, this is the guy I'm most excited about, Rook. Now we know Rook, um, if there was a tier below F tier, Rook would be here for years. I mean, Rook, Rook is literally only used when people are like level three. So, but with the new self revive that's happening with Rook next season, that boy might be, I'm going to say A tier. The only thing that's a little sussy baka among us Fortnite poop is the fact that the self revive on it is like five seconds. If it was like a faster self res, I'd put him at S. But basically what happens is Rook puts down his Rook armor. It already gives you additional HP. And then if one of your teammates gets knocked, um, if they have Rook armor on, they can self revive themselves. So yeah, man, we're going to have Rook up pretty high there. Sledge, traditional, you know, OG. I, I don't think Sledge will ever be S tier, but I think Sledge is very good. I think it would be disgraceful to have Sledge at B tier. I think we put him at, I think we put him at A tier. The reason why I like Sledge, the reason why I like Sledge is Sledge. Okay, can my dog stop fucking barking? If my dog barks one more time, I'm going to fucking bark. Thank you. Quiet. The reason why I like Sledge is because he has a sledgehammer. He ha it's because he has grenades. His gun has like no recoil, and his ability is good, man. I I I like Sledge. Thatcher, good old mother from the Zuffing. Thatcher, probably the most banned operator in the game, for a very good reason. Oh my god, I forgot though. Thatcher's actually getting nerfed. <sighs> he might be mid, man. I'm gonna say beats here because the radius that Thatcher uh. The radius that Thatcher can EMP shit is like big right now, but next season it's going to be like, <laughs> next season it's going to be a much smaller radius. So that I think Thatcher's actually not going to be S tier anymore. We're going to have him at B. We're going to have him at B. Smoke, good old Smokey Doki. If you watch any high level of Siege, any like pro league fucking comp, whatever, bro. Smoke gets played a lot. He's very good for plant denial. He's very good for he's very good for just wasting time on on the attacker's end. Mute. Oh my god. If there was a tier above S tier, like um, what would be a good name for this tier? Uh, S plus, bro. S plus. Mute would be S plus. I fucking love Mute. One of the best gadgets in the game. He has a shotgun. He has an SMG 11. He has a C4. You can use his shotgun to make rotations. It mutes a, mutes a fucking tank. Thermite. So now this is something I'm going to say that's, this is going to be a little bit of a wild take. I think if you're looking at purely just the gadgets themselves, I think Thermite's actually a better operator than Ace. And somebody's going to be like, well, it's like, well, Ace, you could throw them in Thermite. You have to, shut the fuck up, Timmy. I'll explain it. Thermite, you don't have to worry about getting impact tricked. If you're ace, bro, you have to worry about getting impact tricked. If you don't know what impact tricking is, it's when enemy players will allow somebody to ace the wall. It'll get one, it'll have one explosion, then they'll impact it so the second explosion doesn't go off and you can't vault through that ace. I think for his gadget, Thermite's better. The only reason why I like using ace more and I think why every human being is that mother fluff in AK-12, one of the best guns in the game. One of the best guns in the game. So we're going to throw <clears throat> good old Thermite at S. I think Thermite's an S tier operator. Ash. This is going to be another hot take. I think Ash fell off a little bit. I think Ash fell off. Let me explain. We all remember back in the day when Ash had an ACOG. She had a, a hitbox that was literally a fucking noodle. She had no recoil, 31 bullets on that R4C. The R4C got nerfed into the ground, but this season could be the revival of Ash. This season could be the revival of Ash. What I'm hearing from a lot of reputable, valuable sources uh, known by the name of Ubisoft, a <laughs> little bit of a joke there. Um, the R4C is gonna have good recoil. 
The only reason why I don't have Ash at S tier, and I don't think I ever will, is she just lacks utility. Ash, I mean, if you're not getting frags on Ash, you're not really doing anything, realistically. Best case scenario for an Ash player is, okay, you you Ash breached a castle or you Ash breached a shield. Like, that's best case scenario. So I'm going to throw Ash at A tier. Um, might be a little bit of a... I know some people are going to disagree with me, but I don't, I don't fucking care. Okay, I don't care. On to the next operator. Oh my god, myself. <laughs> Pulse, the next operator. I don't... I don't know if I'm in love with Pulse. I think it's very fair to have Pulse at B tier. I think in certain scenarios, Pulse can be one of the best operators in the game. And then in other scenarios, he's just not a, you know, he's not a, he's not a game changer. But there are scenarios where he can be a game changer. Like, let's get, let's give an example here. Let's say you're on Oregon, okay? And you are in a fucking... 1v2 scenario and there's like 10 seconds left and your teammates are calling out yo he's planting on default upstairs and your pulse and they don't know that your pulse bro and you get that c4 kill time's gonna run out and you'll win the round most of the time though pul pulse is like pretty mid i think he's good for giving uh call outs though good good intel operator he's definitely in the same at least in b tier i think castle I do think Castle got a lot better recently when they gave him the 1.5 scope, when they gave him the um, the four Castle Barricades instead of the three. He has a BP. I'm gonna, I think Castle's a very fair A tier. The, the reason why Castle isn't S is because the UMP just is not... The UMP is just not hitting. The umpy wumpy. It just doesn't hit. Um, it's just a very slow fire rate gun. You're not going to see anybody go nuclear with the UMP. Yeah. But his utility, he's probably top five in the game for his just straight up utility. The guy has a super shoddy. He can make rotations. He has a BP. He has four of those, um, uh, what's it called, castles. And when I say BP, I'm talking about a bulletproof camera. I'm not talking about a big penis. So that's what BP means. <laughs> okay, now we're on to our next operator, Montoya. Montoya. See, now Monty's a weird one because in the wrong hands, Monty's an F tier. In the right hands, on the right. Boo! Oh my god! All right, it saved it. Thank God. I thought it. I thought it didn't save it for a second. Oh my goodness. Okay. So okay, okay. In the right hands, attacking the right site with the right team, Monty's good. The only thing about Monty is, I think if you're a solo queue player, I wouldn't really recommend using Monty because yeah, I mean. With Monty, dude, you gotta rely on your teammates heavily, right? You gotta rely on your teammates heavily. And with Montoya, um, if your teammates aren't hitting them headshots, I mean, here's the thing with Monty, bro. If you're in a 2v1 scenario and it's you, it's you on Monty and your teammates on like Ace or something, and you're playing against a Jaeger, you're gonna win nine times out of ten because Monty is so good when he has those numbers. But if Monty's in a 1vx scenario, 1v2, 1v3, and he can get focused, it's really bad. It's really bad because all the guy has is a fucking pistol. I think it's very fair to put Monty out of B tier. Um, I think if he's in the right hands, he can be very deadly. One thing that always comes to my mind when I think of Monty is when teammate, when teams are attacking Garage on Clubhouse. And um, when teams are when teams are attacking Garage on Clubhouse, it's just so, you can apply so much pressure with Monty. On to the next operator. Dude, there's like so many operators in Siege. Wow. Okay, well, this video is going to be a nice, beefy, long, hard, veiny Johnson video. Twitch. Uh, dude, like, when I think about Twitch, <laughs> when I think about Twitch, I get so fucking sad. I get so sad, dude, because Twitch used to be in the S plus tier, bro. You guys remember OG Yo. Twitch. 31 bullets, F2, no recoil. Yo, main sub, thank you for this year one subscription to the Mother Fluff and Twitch stream. I love you so much. Now, when you see Twitch, it's like, meet, 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 meet. here, um, but I, like, she's good. Don't get me wrong. Twitch is good. I'm going to throw Twitch at A tier. It's just crazy because she used to be insane. Who, re Dude, who remembers the OG Twitch? Remember when you could shock people to death? Bro, if somebody was on 10 HP, 20 HP, Twitch shock drones would do 10, 10 damage a shock. Now it's like, it's like your little, it's like you're tickling their Johnson. It does like 1 HP. I'm pretty sure it literally does 1 HP. Um, Doc. 
Oh my God. Um, congratulations, Doc. You are the very first uh, low tier in this video. You're a fucking disgrace. Thunderbird ran you out of town. Thunderbird literally ran you out of business. Dude, if you're running Doc instead of Thunderbird in year seven, season two ranked, I'm genuinely fucking concerned for you. I'm not going to put him at F tier. I think that's a little bit too disrespectful, but I'm going to throw him at E tier. The only time Doc was ever useful in this game, let's be real, let's call it what it is. The only time Doc was ever useful in Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege was when Thunderbird didn't exist and he had an ACOG. Who remembers the Doc mains who spawn peaked every round? I do. I wanted to, I wanted to smash my monitor every time I died to one of them. Oh my God, we're getting into the really shitty operators now. I've always said this, um, the, the Russian operators in Siege just aren't good. I mean, let's look here. Fuse, Glass, Tachanka, Capcan. The best one there is Capcan. If Capcan's the best operator in your caliber, that's probably not good. We're going to get into Fuse now, though. Um, I think Fuse got a little bit better. I don't, I don't necessarily think he's completely useful and viable. The, the problem I have with Fuse is, you know, in the perfect scenario with Fuse, you're, you're getting vertical on a team, right? You're fusing above a team. Um, you're, you're, you know, you're above insight, you're fusing, you're fusing, um, onto a team. You got vert going. The problem with fuse is if you're at like plat elo or higher, the odds of you getting C Ford are so high because one fuse literally moves one mile an hour. And two, he's like one of the loudest operators in the game. So it's like every time you get to that ideal scenario with fuse, you, you, you just get yourself C Ford. Now, there are some cool tricks you can do with Fuse on Oregon when you can, like, get bandits off walls, get mute jammers off walls. But I think all around, I'm actually going to throw Fuse at C. I'm not going to completely, I'm not going to completely shit on Fuse. I think a lot of people are going to get mad at me for putting him that high. He has the AK-12, dude, and you can do some cool tricks with Fuse. He's not as bad as he used to be. All right, we'll call it that. Now we're on to fucking Glass. Why is Glass even here? Like, like no, like, seriously. If you are using glass in ranked, you are selling your teammates. You are literally throwing. You do not care about winning. You don't care about your team. You might classify yourself as a psychopath. Glass is the very first F tier of the video. If a single person disagrees with me on this, if a, if a single person disagrees with me on this, you're wrong. I, I don't know what else to say other than you're wrong. You're wrong. You're literally wrong. Big Daddy Tachanka. Okay, Tachangus. Blazungus. <sighs> I have Tachanka in this bracket. Um, I do think, I don't think Tachanka's as bad as Glass. I'd say he's in the same caliber as Doc. The the only real scenario where Doc is or, or Tachanka is useful nowadays with his flamethrower ability is if you're really on like a time constraint and you're just trying your very best to waste the enemy team's time. The problem with Tachanka is I feel like that LMG, when you're actually using it, it's it's like terrible. It's literally terrible. Now, I honestly think the OG Tachanka in that turret was more fun, more cool than what they have now. The flames, it's just boring. Um, I don't really enjoy that much. Okay, Capcan's probably the hardest operator in the video game for me to give an accurate rating on. Because listen, if you're at like gold elo, I mean, I'm telling you, you're going to dominate with Capcan. Golds don't drone. They rarely check uh, doorways for Capcan traps. Like, it, it, Capcan is, like, very ELO-dependent. And don't get me wrong, all of these operators here are ELO-dependent, but I feel like Capcan is the most ELO-dependent. I'll say this. I, I'm going to throw Capcan at, like, C. I'm going to throw him at C because the, he, he has the potential to be an S+. Plus. Um, he also can be completely useless. The thing is, if you're not hitting people with your Capcan traps, think about the utility you're bringing for your team. Absolutely nothing. You are basically solely relying on these five Capcan traps you have, right? Normally, they're only going to be on three doors because, you know, you put two on one door, two on one door, then one on one door, right? So it's like, I think Capcan, I think if you're at gold, silver, even low plat, he's deadly because the drone work is just so sloppy in those in that elo. But I think once you get to higher ranks, you're just going to notice that those Capcans don't get triggered as much as they used to. But I've definitely had my fair share of Capcan traps uh, work on, you know, champs and diamonds. So he's he's a good operator. I, I'm actually going to move him up to B. I don't think he's in the same class as Fuse. I think he's a little bit better than Fuse. I don't think he's anywhere near um, any of the operators above him. Blitzy poo, blitzy baby. 
So Blitz is, uh, yeah, I'd say Blitz is Monty's uh, ugly cousin. I don't think Blitz is a good operator by any means. I'm going to be honest, it, 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 I, I hate to do this, but I might have to throw Blitz at F tier. See, for me, man, when I'm looking at rating operators, there's two main things that I'm thinking about all the time when I'm giving operators ratings. I'm thinking about their, their utility and their gun. Let's look at Blitz's gun. It's a fucking pistol, and his utility is a shield that's about the size of a Johnson. So you have basically no utility and a pistol. I, I, I don't know. The it, it, He can be useful. Obviously, somebody's going to be like, well, but, but, but like... Okay, every operator obviously can be useful from time and time again. We're talking about, you know, if you play 100 rounds, the success rate in those 100 rounds with this operator. Blitz, Blitz and Glaz are in the same bracket, I fear. <coughs> Blitz and Glaz are in the same bracket. Ooh, this is it. We're, we're, we're approaching into an interesting category here with IQ, Bandit, and Jaeger. So... OG IQ, we all know she was crazy back when IQ had grenades, man. Can we get an F in the chat for IQ's grenades? If IQ still had grenades, I, I'd put her at S because she was one of the best frag operators in the game. I think um, when Buck lost his nades, it didn't really affect Buck as much as it affected IQ because with Buck, the main purpose of Buck is that vertical play. He has a good gun. He has those breaches so he can open up hatches. IQ, when she lost those nades, it almost feels like less of a fragger and more of just, you know, you gather intel. Now, I do I do think IQ is miles better than Fuse. I, I put IQ in A. I, I don't think IQ... I don't think IQ dropped, too, dropped off too much when she lost nades, but she definitely went from S to A. In my personal opinion, I still think she's one of the stronger operators in the game, without a doubt. Um, I love me some IQ. The IQ is just a 10 out of 10 operator when you're, you know, you want to find Val cams, you want to find C4s, you want to, you know what I'm saying? Like IQ is just a 10 out of 10 operator, very fun operator, very good operator. <laughs> Next up, we have <sighs> Bandit, man. This guy fell off. I'm not going to lie. Bandit complete. Dude, who remembers the OG Bandit um, back when Thatcher's, uh, Dude, oh my god, dude, 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 the OG Bandit, bro, like, the, I think, here, here's my opinion on Bandit. I think Bandit started to fall off when these things happened. He lost his ACOG, and another big thing that happened that made Bandit fall off was when Maverick got introduced to the game. Because back in the day, it was basically just Thatcher Thermite, and you could Bandit trick almost any wall in the game, as long as it as long as the floor below you wasn't soft because teams would nade below and ash below so if if the floor below you wasn't soft i'm telling you right now right now bo you could realistically you could realistically bandit trick any wall you fucking wanted now i think maverick really killed bandit for me i think maverick i still think bandit's good um i don't think he's completely useless i'm gonna throw him at b tier I think if you want 10 out of 10 denial, you want to rock with Mute or Cade. I don't think I don't think Bandit's the wave. Jaeger. Okay, now th this is just immediate. Jaeger has been the face of Siege for, I don't even know, seven years. His gun isn't even that good anymore. It's just mid. He doesn't have a 1.5 scope. It do if they give Jaeger a 1.5 scope, I think that would be so fucking fun. It it'll never happen because Ubisoft is like anti-fun. If they gave Jaeger a 1.5 scope, he'd be so fucking fun. But that's neither here nor there. Um, you need Jaeger. It's like, it's it's not even, I don't even consider Jaeger an operator at this point because it's like, it's like whenever I'm reacting to clips and doing coach jinxy and doing guessing ranks and I see a team that consistently isn't bringing Jaeger, I can immediately think, okay, this is a low rank because you need Jaeger. If you want to get out of like plat, diamond, whatever, you you need Jaeger. Like you can't you cannot play rounds without Jaeger. He's he's just the, one of the most essential operators in the game. It honestly doesn't even matter if they nerf his gun for the ninth time. You're still gonna need Jaeger. That's the end. That's the that's the moral of the fucking story. Who wants to get grenaded, right? <clears throat> Next up we have Bucky Wucky. I do think Buck is one of the stronger operators in the game. I don't know. I don't really know if I could throw Buck at S tier. I think that's a little crazy. Back when he had nades, maybe. I think Buck is, is a perfect example of an A tier operator. I, I think Buck, 
I think when you're making vertical on a team, uh, something that immediately pops to mind, one of the maps that he dominates on is Clubhouse because he has those breaching gadgets. So Buck can get two hatches as long as the team is an impact tricking. Higher ranks, teams are going to be impact tricking. But for the most part, the majority of the people watching this video, if you're gold, plat, diamond, you're not going to really have to worry about too much impact tricking and ranked. But So Buck can get the hatches on Clubhouse. He can get all of the vert on back arsenal. He can get all of the vert on the connector hallway. Buck is just a really strong operator. And I do think, I do think Buck, when he got that 1.5 scope, I think he got a lot better. I think any operator that gets a 1.5 scope immediately gets better. Um, Buck really got better though, because I like the combination of those high fire rate guns with 1.5 scopes. What immediately comes to mind is like Mozzie and Alibi, because when you have a high fire rate gun on a 1.5 scope, it's just headshots on headshots. Okay, now this one's an interesting one. I used to get ripped into all the time by like PC champs and PC content creators because I never said Frost was good. I always said Frost was like terrible. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say Frost is an S tier operator. I don't really think anyone would agree with that. I, I do think Frost has a very high upside on, on, a lot of, um, on a lot of maps and a lot of sites. Let me explain. Let me explain the dynamic of Frost right now. So... If we're, we're not even going to think about coppers, silvers, bronzes, golds. We're not going to think about that because we know that they're always going to be hitting those frost mats. Champs, not, they don't really hit a lot of frost mats. They do. But it's more about the fact that if you have to deal with the frost mat, you have to vault into a window and look at the floor. That, that's, the big, that's the big thing with a frost mat. So let's take like Outback, for example. Um, the main part of Outback when you're defending party room as a, as a defensive team you want to do your very best job of holding down garage. If you're playing a champ stack and they they drone sight, they see that you have a frost, they already know where the frost mats are. It's about the principle of you have to jump into that window and look at the floor. Nine times out of ten, you're not gonna survive if, if their attention is focused on you. You're not you're not gonna survive. You can't choose between the person and the frost mat. You you gotta you know what I'm saying. It's so I think frost just makes you think it's a it's a it's a it's an effort thing. I think it's just an effort thing. You gotta look at the floor. <laughs> Now we're on to BB. Um, I think the thing that's interesting about BB is why is he still in the game? It, okay, if I'm if I'm an Ubisoft dev, and we we roll this back to Operation Dustline when BB first got released, um, you know, and they're we're at the fucking meeting and they're like, yeah, we're gonna add an operator that has a shield covering his face in a one shot headshot game, and we're gonna give him eight hundred HP. We're going to give him 800 HP on his shield. I'd be like, um, guys, um, where's the LSD? <laughs> like, oh, what are we doing right now? Now, he went from being literally the most broken operator in the history of Siege. If you don't believe me, look at the OG videos of BB. To now, it's like, do people even pick this guy? Because now, if one bullet lands on that shield, the shield is broken. It's just, it, I don't like the idea of any type of shields in Siege. I don't like the idea of Monty. I don't like the idea of uh, Clash. I don't like the idea of Blitz. I don't like the idea of BB. I just don't like the idea of a shield operator in, in Rainbow Six Siege. I don't think it works. But um, BB's probably the worst shield operator. No, he definitely is the worst shield operator. <laughs> He's worse than Blitz. I if, if I had to choose and one of my teammates was like, yo, bro, I got two fucking operators on... Uh, on my attack, on my attack, on my account. It's either Blitz or BB. I'm gonna be like, bro, play fucking Blitz. Cause BB's just beyond scuffed. So Valkyrie, this is an interesting one because um, we all know about the nerf. I think it was incorporated last season, like three months ago, when they basically made it to where Valk cams cannot be outside for, I think it's like five seconds. And then it immediately shuts off and deletes the cam. I don't think that matters that much. I still think Valkyrie is just one of the best operators in the game. And it's one of the operators where I'm sure fellow champs and diamonds would agree with this. It's like the higher elo you get, the more difficult Valkyrie is to deal with. Bro, if you're playing against a good Valkyrie player on Villa or Cafe and your teammates are lazy and they don't want to bring IQ, you're going to get C4'd. You, you are going to get C4'd. Valkyrie is a deadly operator on a lot of maps. Uh, one thing I think that would take Valkyrie to the next level and, and be in that S plus division that we were talking about, kind of like the, you know, the very best of the best, is if they gave Valkyrie a 1.5 scope. 
what I would do if I was Siege is I would just make the game fun. I would I would just give everybody 1.5 scopes and let everyone go crazy. That that's just what I would do. Um, obviously, I'm not a dev, so. Okay, Capitao, probably one of the most situational operators in, in the game. I'll say this about Capitao. I'll say this about Capitao right now. It is probably one of the highest skill gap operators in the game. If you're a copper or a silver and you're using Capitao, bro, just put it away. Put them down, put them away. Get on like Sledge or something. If you give a really good player Capitao, it can be fucking deadly. Um, I remember I was playing Face It like last week and I was on Clubhouse and I think I was playing against them. Um, I was playing against like a really good team and uh, I was holding top garage, right? With like Womize. They burnt the Womize with flashes and then they Capitao'd me. There was fire all over the rafters. I had to run away from the fire and they immediately shot me the second I stood up. Like if he's on a good team on the right side, he can be really good. I just don't think there's enough sites for Capitao to be great on. So he gives me he gives me uh, C tier vibes. He gives me C tier vibes. He doesn't have any guns that are like crazy. Um, Cavera. God, this one's tough because it's like it's again what I've been saying earlier. It, she's so elo dependent. Uh, she's so elo dependent. Don't get me wrong. I see champs get interrogated all the time. It's just way less common than a gold getting interrogated. Let's be real. This is what gold elo ranked is on Xbox. Five people, half of which play Siege once a month. They're solo queuing. Some of them are literally just fucking... There's no comms, no callouts, no coordination. Solo push every round. Um, don't really drone that much. Cav can be deadly. If I were to go on like a Smurf account and be in like gold elo or like silver, I'd probably play on Cav, bro, because I'd get three interrogations a game. But I feel like once players get less lazy, she becomes like basically useless. Um, unless, you know, the once a blue moon, she actually gets an interrogation. You know what I'm saying? I think, I think Cav starts to lose her value at like plat two, plat one, because players do actually have some fucking effort at plat. She's very elo dependent. I'll give Cav D tier though. I definitely think she's, she has more potential. Yo, uh, Putty, thank you for the tier one, my boy. I definitely think she has more potential than Glass, Blitz, and, um, BB, Doc, and Tachanka. Habana, I, I really like Habana. I, I'm not going to lie to you right now. She's either A or S. I, I really like Habana. I honestly might throw Habana at S. Dude, if you're playing bank or like clubhouse, I mean, I mean, dude, you need a Habana. Let's be real. Like, like she's one of those operators where it's like, if you're on a certain map and you're not bringing Habana, you're fucking throwing at that point. <clears throat> you're throwing at that point. Okay, Echo. Ooh, Echo's a funky one. Echo's a little uh, Echo's a little funky. I remember the OG Echo when uh he 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 this guy used to be probably uh, probably S tier. Nowadays cuz I mean, let's call it what it is, dude. This isn't just about gadgets. This is about guns. I I that gun that Echo has with that mandatory suppressor on it is one of the worst guns in the game. But let's think of it like this, okay? Next season, as we all know, they're buffing suppressors. So it, we could see a lot more Echo gameplay. We could see a lot more Echo gameplay if, if that suppressor buff is as game-changing as it looks to be. If you guys um, don't know the suppressor buff I'm talking about, next season, um, Ubisoft announced that suppressors aren't going to have any damage drop-off. Suppressors have always been really good, um, really fucking good in Siege. The only issue with suppressors, which is a big issue, is it, you know, it fucks up your damage. It brings down your damage by like 5%, 10%. So it, with, there's, if there's no damage drop-off, we could see a lot more Echo gameplay. I do think Echo is a great operator, though. I think he's, he clears anybody from C to F by a mile. Okay, Jackal. Maybe this one's easy. I can easily, without any hesitation, say Jackal's an S-tier operator. The guy has one of the best guns in the game. He has a shotgun secondary, so if you need him to, like, open up a soft hatch, he can do that for you. And on top of all of that, the cherry on top, he is literally the king of roam clearing. And it's going to be interesting when they add in uh, the new operator next season. I think it's called Hive or something. I don't even know what the new operator is called. It's the Beehive operator. It's going to be interesting if you see Jackal and Hive kind of working together on a roam clear. 
It'll probably never happen because, I mean, let's be real. Jackal gets played one out of every 300 ranked games, right? Luke, thank you for the prime sub. I mean, there's a reason why operators like Jackal just get 24-7 banned. Mira. I think Mira's an immediate A tier. I can say that with, like, no hesitation. Mira, on certain maps, she's, like, basically a necessity. Downstairs on bank, upstairs on bank, upstairs on cafe. Um, what else, bro? Villa, upstairs on villa. Like, I, I can literally just sit here and name them. You can use her on border. Like, there, there's like 20, there's like 20 organ, bro, downstairs on organ. There's just so many maps where Mira is so strong. I think it would be disrespectful to have her at anything under than A tier. Okay, this is the one operator I've been most excited to rate. This, in my opinion, this is my opinion, and this is, you know, this is, this is my video, so I can, I can, this is my tier list. I can say what I want. I think Ying is the most underrated operator in the entire video game. I, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I think Ying is the most underrated, underplayed operator in the entire game. Let's, let's break this down. She has two smokes, an 81 bullet LMG with a 1.5 scope, a 2.0 scope, or an ACOG, whatever you prefer, and four candelas and the, the the radius of these candelas is like 30 to 40 feet like I, I don't know man ying is scary when you're playing against a good ying player try dude try to hold down bakery on cafe if you're playing against a ying like you're you're not making it out alive like if you're playing against a good ying player i i think it's just wraps i think ying i think ying is the most underrated operator in rainbow six siege that was like that was my one really hot take. I've been excited to get to Yang because I just think I've thought that for like a few months now. I think in the last tier list video that we did like six, seven months ago, I probably had Yang at like B tier because I didn't, I didn't, I kind of slept on Yang. Um, but yeah, she's an S tier, man. I'm not saying she's the best of the best, but if you're playing against a good Yang, it shit gets wicked. Okay, Legion. This one's interesting because I mean, we all remember the OG Legion, <laughs> easy S tier. Modern day current lesion. I don't really see lesion get played much anymore. Um, because the current meta, as we all know, is 1.5 scopes. Um, his gun is like literally amazing. Um, it's literally amazing. It just doesn't have a 1.5 scope, and his ability kind of got nerfed how many times? Two or three times. I, I just don't think lesion is as great as he used to be. He's not completely terrible though. He's not completely terrible though. Okay, so this next one's gonna be interesting. So we have Zofia. If you're asking me, Zofia, right now, right now, Bo, are you serious, right now, S tier, obviously. I'd say Zofia is the epitome of a frag operator right now. But word on the street is she's going to get nerfed into the ground next season. So I want to make this tier list for next season. You know, that's kind of the whole reason why I'm making this tier list is because the new season's in like two days, three days. So I kind of want to give you guys, you know, a, my general mindset of who I think is going to be good and bad next season. Apparently, Zofia is getting nerfed into the ground. So we're going to bring her from S. We're going to bring her from S. We're going to bring her from S to A. And here's the thing. Yo, NBA, thank you for the prime sub, NBA. So Zofia's LMG is kind of what makes Zofia. And I know um, they're bringing back the AR a little bit. It's not going to be. I was looking at the um, the charts on it. The, the AR that they're they're buffing, the, the M762, it's not going to be as good as it was back in like the prime OG days, but let's call it what it is. It's going to be absolutely nothing How compared to I the, get the Zofia MF LMG down. right now. I don't think there's a gun in this game that compares to Zofia LMG. We're talking 150 bullets, high damage, and no recoil. That's terrifying. So I think she's still going to be good. I think A tier is very fair to Zofia. Um... But yeah, man, that's going to be interesting what happens next season with Sophia. LX, thank you for the prime stuff, my boy. <clears throat> okay, now we have Ella. So I, when I started playing Siege, um, I started playing in like year two. And I don't remember the exact season that Ella got released. I think she got released with Legion, I'm pretty sure. I'm not really sure why, um, but she got released with like Legion and Sophia. I don't even remember what happened. I might be tripping. But um, I remember the original Ella. We're talking four Grismont mines that affect your vision, hearing, and they shake your screen. 51 bullets and zero recoil. Like the OG Ella was S+. 
nowadays she gives me lesion vibes she gives me like the once great trap operator but now mid vibes i'd honestly rather have a cap can on my team than an ella again ella's not completely useless i would just most definitely rather have a cap can on my team that's just me myself personally i think c tier is being pretty generous i think z i think c tier is being pretty fucking generous <clears throat> okay we have Dokabi. Mm. This is another operator I feel is pretty underrated. I don't think Dokabi is the best of the best, but I just don't see her getting played enough. I think when it comes down to it on roam clearing, let, let's look at it like this. Roam clearing, let's be honest. Jackal's not even an option on roam clearing. The guy gets banned every single game. So you're going to have to rely on operators like Dokabi and Lion if you really do want to effectively roam clear. I think when you know somebody's in a room and you got a Dokabi on your team, it's it's light work every time. I think Dokabi is very underrated. I only thing I don't love about Dokabi is how she only has two calls. I think the fact that she can hack cams is cool too. I think if you give Dokabi three calls and take away the cam hacking, I think she'd be really good. I think Dokabi would be fucking deadly. Um, she's still she's still solid though. She's in the top like thirty percent of attackers, I'd say. Hmm. We got one of my personal favorites, one of my all-time favorites. When it comes down to just hardcore roaming, this is, I mean, this, this guy's the cream of the crop when it comes down to hardcore roaming, dude. He has a great gun. He has impacts so he can make rotations. Or what I like is having somebody on my team who has like a shotgun, like a mute or a smoke, let them make all the rotations. And then Vigil can keep two impacts in his pocket for claymores, air jabs, gridlocks, whatever you can think of, any type of flank watch. Or if he wants to impact the wall, impact the hatch, I think Vigil is probably the most deadly roamer uh, of all time, in my opinion. It's not even close to. Okay, Lion. Lion, I think, falls into the same category as Dokabi as an underrated roam clearer. I'm going to throw Lion at B. I don't know if they're nerfing his gun. Apparently, they're nerfing, like, basically every gun that has, like, a lot of bullets. So, we'll see what happens to Lion. Um... Who remembers the original lion though i mean that was fucking terrifying you basically had wall hacks for five seconds and i remember back in the day this is a little bit of like a throwback but i used to play secure area ranked because <clears throat> if you guys played a few years ago it wasn't just bomb you could play secure area ranked hostage ranked so i only played secure area ranked i didn't start playing bomb ranked till burnt horizon so um back when lion was like at his peak if none if nobody was holding sight which happened all the time because i was like probably plat three back then so if you get one kill in sight right and take sight and then you hit your lion scan there's nothing they can do like they have to rotate the site they can't just sit there and stand still but lion forces them to stand still so they can either a rotate the site and give the other team literal wall hacks or they're just stuck standing still allowing you to secure the objective so Lion used to be like a secure area. He's probably the best secure area operator of all time back when he was at his peak. I think he's still good though. I think he's another grossly underrated operator. I don't think he comes close to being Yang underrated, but I think Lion's really good. Finca, oh my God. I, we all know about the Finca meta, the heal meta, the Finca Thunderbird meta. This meta started in like North Star, I'd say. And it's crazy to think how underplayed Finca was back in the day because um, I remember her health didn't last. It was like weird. Her adrenal surges were weird. Finca didn't really start taking off in its its usage until like North Star, I'd say. Um, apparently, they're nerfing her LMG and they're nerfing her spear and they're taking away her nades. I just still I just still love the idea of being able to revive your teammates anywhere in the entire map. You can be a hundred meters away from your teammate. Let's say he falls off the fucking roof because he was getting a uh, fucking pop tart. Let's say he falls off the roof. Boom, he's on his feet if you're Finca. That, that's the one thing I love about Finca. It's just endless heals. And I'm sure they're going to nerf the spear a little bit. I'm sure they're going to nerf the LMG. I, I, I still think she's going to have solid enough guns to keep her at S tier. I could be wrong. It's just not like me to bring Finca out of S tier. She's just way too good. Alibi. Oh my God. This alibi shit didn't start till like last season. And it's crazy how these metas just formulate. When Alibi got the 1.5 scope, she wasn't really like being played a crazy amount like she is now. I think it's because they've just been nerfing so many operators. Like when they nerfed Mozzie back when he was like the big 1.5 king. 
it's like another operator just takes his place. I, I love Alibi. I, I, I can honestly give Alibi S tier right now, Bo. One of the highest fire rate guns in the game. She has a shotgun pistol. She can make rotations. She can make head holes. She can make whatever holes you need, foot holes. She has one, let, let's, be, let's be real. She has one of the best guns in the game, and she has a shield. Don't sleep on those deployable shields. Alibi is definitely an S tier. Alibi is definitely an S tier. Okay, this next take is about to be crazy. So we all know about the original Maestro, 81 bullets, ACOG, and his evil eyes. You had to basically blow them up. I'm going to be honest. I think Maestro is absolutely fucking mid. And right now, in the current meta, I, I just don't see a place for Maestro. I mean, obviously, you know, there is strats with him, like on Cafe, on the Pillars. I just don't, I don't think Maestro is as good as he used to be. I don't know if he ever will be as good as he used to be. I'll give him a step up on Ella, Capitao, Fuse. I'm going to give him B tier. He used to be fucking crazy. And it's disappointing because it's like I always said, and this has always been my theory with Siege, but I think the more broken guns there are, the more fun the game is. That's just my opinion. Like, like when I got LMG'd into the ground by an ACOG, a Maestro, I didn't really care. It's fucking sick. Like, I can use it too. But um, I just don't like having a 1.0 scope on, a, on an LMG. It just doesn't feel too good. Maverick, um, if you don't have Maverick at S tier, I gotta ask you, where'd you get your fucking pot from? Because it Ma Maverick is fucking disturbing. He's so good. The guy's ability is amazing. He has nades and he has a dude. I think his gun is so underrated. I'm not gonna put it up there with like Zofia LMG or like Jackals like C70. Or I'm not gonna put it up there with the AK-12. But it's a pretty fucking good gun. It doesn't have that much recoil. It has like basically no recoil and high damage and a good fire rate. Clash. God almighty, this one's tough. Because, okay, this is, we're falling back into the ELO dependent category, um, where, let's, let me try to explain this perfectly, okay? When, let's, let's be real. When you're a copper, a bronze, or a silver, and you run into a Clash, you're shitting bricks. You're literally shitting all over yourself. If you see a champ playing against a Clash, it's like, okay, boom, punch the shield, boom, shoot his feet, or boom, okay, flash him. I want to play Nomad, I'll air jab him, or boom, flash him, I'll nade him. Champs just handle it quick. I don't think Clash is very good at all. I think when you get in low elo, though, I mean, people will literally shit their pants when they see Clash. I mean, she is, she definitely can strike fear into people at low elo. I'm not going to throw, I'm going to throw Clash above E tier. I'm going to throw Clash at D tier. I don't think Clash, Clash is completely useless. She gives me Kavera vibes. She she has a high upside, but it's just... Yo, off-brand, thank you for the two gifted subs. I love you so much, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm. Yo, if you guys are watching this on um, the YouTube channel when we post this, like, tomorrow, real quick, man, make sure you guys um, sub to the motherfucking Twitch stream. Look at this, my boy, off-brand, tier one sub for the first time ever, which means he now has the Jinxie charm. If you do sub to me on Twitch, you will get the Jinxie charm. We're on the grind to 10,000 subs right, right now. I think we're going to hit it this month. It's my birthday month, man. It's September. Um, so yeah, man, if you're watching this on YouTube and you're enjoying this fucking video, man, I would appreciate it if you could drop the Twitch a follow, Doug. All right, back to business. Nomad. Ooh, baby. I think Nomad's S tier. I, I, I really do. She's kind of like the fucking queen of flank watch. Like Nomad's pretty annoying to deal with if you're a roamer. Nomad is pretty annoying to deal with your roamer. The only issue I have with Nomad, and I think a lot of players relate to this, um, she doesn't really have like a crazy good weapon. She has the shitty AK or the sh shitty ARX. Now the thing with the ARX is, I actually really like the ARX on Ayana because it has a 1.5 scope, but Nomad doesn't have a 1.5 scope. It's kind of fucking awkward. But I just think her utility and her gadget is way too good to move her to A tier. I mean, on on certain takes, certain pushes, you need a Nomad. Cade, oh my God, Kaid, bruh. The motherfucking goat of denial. I think Cade is like, I think Cade is gonna go down as like one of the best operators of all time in Siege. He, he's literally always been good. Um, I love how creative you can be with Cade because another thing with Bandit, I know we were kind of shitting on Bandit earlier, but another issue you have with Bandit is like, okay, you have to place it on the floor right here. like. Cade, bro, you can literally run underneath the wall. Or you can go downstairs, shoot open a fucking uh, TV and throw it into like the TV. Like you can be so creative with Cade, bro. Okay, now we have Gridlock. 
I don't think gridlock is completely useless. I oh <laughs> please save, please save. Oh my god, thank god, thank god, thank god. W's in the fucking chat. That was almost bad. I don't think gridlock is completely useless. I think gr the problem with gridlock is she's always just gonna be in nomad's shadow. Like if nomad, if nomad was never released, gridlock would be known as like, you know, the flank watch operator. She's just always going to be in Gridlock or in Nomad's Shadow. I'm going to throw Gridlock at B tier. She's not bad. She's definitely better than everyone in C, D, E, and F. Um, but I just don't think Gridlock is on the level of Nomad. And it's like, it, it's one of the operators that Gridlock is so good, but she, she doesn't get picked because of Nomad. So it's rough. She's like, she's basically just in Nomad's Shadow. Mozzie. Oh my. I think everybody knows Mozzie's S tier. Um... If you play against a Zim champion on Xbox and they have a fucking Mozzie P10 with a 1.5 scope, you're going to be in a coffin nine times out of 10. That, that's just the state of this game. Let's call it what it is, man. Um, Mozzie's just amazing. I love how he's the only operator in the history of Siege that can not only deny intel with his gadget, but in turn create intel. Like when you have Mute, Mute solely denies intel. Mozzie, he can deny intel and then create intel off of it because he can just hijack your drone. That's that's what I've always really loved about Mozzie. I remember back in like Burnt Horizon, I think, when he first got released, I'm like, dude, that guy's going to be fucking sick. And obviously he's, he's much worse now than when he first got released. That's what always happens. But I remember when he had the super shoddy and he had like uh, 21 bullets. Now he has 16, but he's still crazy, dude. He's still a crazy operator. Ooh, this one's going to be tough. Nook is going to be very tough. I think, okay, let, let's look at it like this. I think in terms of hard fragging, she's probably top three on attack right now. In terms of hard fragging, let's break it down. She has a 1.5 scope. She has a solid weapon. She has grenades. She has a deagle as her secondary. The only thing that I think keeps Nook from being S tier right now, Bao, is the fact that she literally has no utility for her team. Like, if you have a player on your team that's playing Nook and he's not at least getting one kill around, he's selling. Because think about it, I mean, it's literally no utility. That's the only thing that separates Nook from being um, A tier to S tier. Because, okay, when you look at the operators I have in S tier on attack, hey. it's always big time utility operators like Finca, Jackal, Habana, Thermite, Ying, Maverick, Nomad. It's like big time S tier for me on attack. You got to have a shitload of utility. That's the only thing Nook lacks. I do think she's a great operator though. I think she's top three in the game if all you care about is getting kills. I, th I, I think you'll fall in love with Nook. Warden, let's just get this one over with, bro. Let's get this fucking one over with. Okay, Warden is definitely better than everyone in F tier. Let's look at E tier here. Is Warden realistically better than Doc? Would I rather have a Doc on my team or a Warden? I'd rather have a Doc, man. I'm sure most of you guys would agree. I'd rather have heals than a dude with fucking cool glasses. I'm gonna give Warden an E. Um, everybody's gonna be like, well, okay, yeah. In certain situations, Warden can be one of the best of the best. Nine times out of ten, that just isn't what happens, man. The flow of a siege round is so random and unpredictable. You need operators like, you know, Jaeger and Mute, where you already know going into the round what the value that they're bringing into the table. Warden, you're kind of like just rolling a dice. Like, will this guy win us the round or will he do literally nothing? It, he's like, he's in that awkward zone. But um, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep Warden at E. I'd rather have a Doc on my team than a Warden, just being completely fair. fair. We'll put him ahead of Tachanka, though. We'll, we'll, we'll give him that. We'll give him that. He's better than Tachanka. Um... And yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm actually gonna maneuver. I'm gonna move my I'm gonna move my board around a little bit. I'm actually gonna move Cav down. And I'm actually gonna move Clash down. And then I'm gonna move Doc and Warden up. Chad, is that a W or an L swap? Let me know in a chat right now. Is that a W or an L swap? That's kind of the swap I'm going for right now. Yo, Ducks, thank you for the tier one. Thank you for subbing to this Twitch stream, man. Enjoy that Jinxy charm. I like that swap. I think uh, I think Doc and Warden uh, definitely have a leg up on Tachanka, Cavan, Clash. Okay, now we're... Dude, Amaru is so hard to... Amaru is so hard to give it accurate rating on because, dude, she can win you a fucking round in 20 seconds or she can lose you a round in 20 seconds. 
Here's one thing that I thought about with Amaru, and it really fucking tripped me out when I thought about it, because we all know that she has four of those uh, hooks, right? Like, she can shoot four of those around. Realistically, the most she gets used is once or twice around, at the very max. The only time Amaru gets used twice is if you, like, Amaru into, like, second floor, and then you want to Amaru through a hatch third floor, and, you know, nine times out of ten... A good player is just going to react to that sound cue immediately and just shit on you. I, I, uh, Amaru is definitely ranging for me anywhere from C to like E. She's in a, she's so awkward. And I just fucking smashed my controller. Awesome. She's so, she's so uncomfortable and awkward. It's like I said, she's one of the only operators that can win you around in 20 seconds. Or, no, she is. She's the only operator in Siege that can win you around in 20 seconds or fucking lose it in 20 seconds. I mean, I mean, if it's 4-4 overtime and your teammates Amaruing into like 90, 90 hall on Villa, you know, you're, you know, your butthole's puckered. You're nervous to see what's going to happen. I do think she's better than anyone in D tier, anyone in E tier, anyone in F tier. Um, I think her gun is just so fucking good. The G8 A1 is crazy. She has a 2.0 scope on it. I'm going to throw Amaru at a cool, nice, clean C tier. I think I think that's fair. Um, I don't think her utility is just enough to bring her up to B. I just don't think she's in that top like 30% of operators. You need utility, man. For, for me, man, the big thing I look for in attackers is utility, man. Okay, Goyo. Goyo is interesting because he's changed so much. Um, I think Goyo's definitely got worse ever since they removed his shield, though. That's just my personal opinion. I think Goyo has gotten so much fluffing worse ever since they removed his shield. Goyo might honestly, in all honesty, be I'm gonna I'm gonna say C tier. I'm gonna say C tier. Um, I I'd rather I, I'd rather have a Goyo than like a um than a Warden or a Doc for sure because I mean Goyo Goyo has a lot of potential. It's just I've seen those that fire get used against defenders so much like attackers will use defenders fire against them so many times let's say you have um one of those goyo traps on like a on like a site doorway okay and you take site and it, you're in like a 2v2 scenario and you get a call out from your teammate that one of them is like roaming and he's going to rotate to that door if there's a goyo trap on that door i mean that's fucked i mean the attacker shoots that goyo trap and that's 20 seconds where you know he can't rotate through that door because he'll, he'll die um I just see, I think Goyo is just used against defenders so much. That's what keeps it from being a B or an A for me. Callie, I, dude, I'm going to be honest. I think Callie's pretty fucking underrated. I think Callie's pretty underrated. And let me explain why. So here's the one thing I really like about Callie. I like how Callie is just such a safe, like, operator in terms of, okay, obviously Maverick is better than Callie, right? But if you're talking about... I mean, there's times where Mavericks will die trying to make Mav holes. I mean, I'm sure it's happened to all of us. It's happened to me 45 times, Doug. Callie, you don't really die as Callie when you're when you're helping, you know, Thermite or Ace get the wall open because it's like you can basically just snipe. You can just drone and snipe wherever that Cade is or that Mute Jammer is. Normally, it's a Cade nine times out of ten. It's way safer. Maverick, you make Maverick holes. Maybe you make a hole above the wall. Teams like to C4 over it. One side that I think I need to see, I want to see Cali get played more on is, um, I honestly only think this if Maverick is banned, but if you're attacking CCTV on Clubhouse, dude, you get that fucking sniper rifle. I mean, dude, you'll get the Cades off in a heartbeat. There's no risk at all. Maverick is a little risky sometimes, but obviously, uh, obviously Maverick is better than Cali. I'm not here to say that. I'm going to throw Cali out of cool beats here though. I do think she's pretty underrated. I think people shit on Cali all the time. Because people just shit on any type of, like, sniper operator in Siege. Which, it makes sense. I mean, Siege just isn't really a sniper game. Because, I just think about it like this. Any gun in the game is a one-shot headshot. So, it only takes one bullet to kill somebody, regardless of what gun you're using. So, why use a sniper? Snipers are only good in, like, Call of Duty when it's, like... You, you know what I mean? Where it's the only option to get one-shots. Wamai. Well, I think if you don't have Wamai well, at S-tier right now, you're tripping. The guy has a 1.5 scope. He has impacts. His gun is decent. It's not great. It's not bad. And his ability is really fucking good. 
The thing I like about Wamai is how customizable he is. You can basically just throw your Wamais in very creative spots whenever you want, wherever you want. That's what I like about Wamai. I think he's an S tier right now. Ooh, now we're dipping into like the hardcore frag operators here. We got Ayana and Oryx. These are the kind of operators where it's like, if you're not getting kills on them, just get off of them. I... Dude, I see Ayana get used so well in Pro League by like Bolo and shit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw Ayana at S tier because this is back to what we were saying earlier. So remember when I was talking about Nook, how Nook has like basically no utility for his team. Nook, Nook's, or for her team, Nook's utility is only on, for, for that operator. It's only for Nook, right? Ayana can actually has the potential to drone in teammates with its clone. It has a good gun. It has nades. It has a gone six. I think Ayana is a top three uh, frag oriented operator right now. Oryx. God, Oryx is a weird one because it's like. He's his utility is like so like it's so meaningless, right? Um, it's just his gun. It just carries him really like let's call it what it is. His gun literally fucking carries him. I'll throw Oryx at like uh, his gun is just so good. I gotta give him beats here. His ability's like atrocious, but his gun is just so fucking good. Okay, Ace. I mean, I'm not even gonna hesitate. Do I even need to fucking explain this one? It just amazing gun, amazing gadget. It's it, Ace is just a 10 out of 10 operator. Okay, now Malusi. Mm. I, I love bringing Malusi when I'm playing against a team of like crouch walkers, like kids who love to just crouch walk up staircases and crouch walk into sight. Malusi is basically a hard counter if you're a complete rat. I might honestly throw Malusi at S tier. I think Malusi is one of the best operators in the game. When we saw Operation Steel Wave, dude, we got two of the best operators in a single DLC. And Ubisoft, um, I know you guys aren't watching this, but can you guys please bring back uh, adding in adding in two two operators a season like thank you zero dude yes i've been wanting to give a rating on zero like all day dude zeros dude zeros gadget is so underrated dude zeros gadget is so fucking underrated i might honestly chuck my boy at a tier dude i love the idea of being able to shoot a camera and stick it to a wall or stick it to the floor anywhere you want anytime you want the guy has four cameras he has a gone six he has breaches so he can actually breach hard hatches as long as they're not cated like dude this guy's a fucking utility king I i'm gonna throw zero at a tier man aruni aruni is immediate s tier i i love i love the idea of aruni's utility so she has three laser gates that can you can put them on walls, you can put them on doors, and it's the way I think of laser gates is, and I think the, this is the way everyone should think of them as, don't have the mindset of, oh, so my Arunis do this much damage to somebody. Nine times out of ten, your Arunis never going to do any damage. The whole point of Aruni is two reasons. People have to burn utility on those Arunis, and you get nonstop, constant flowing intel. So let's say you're playing on organ. Let's say you put in a Rooney on trophy door, which is probably the most common a Rooney in the entire game. If they want to throw a grenade at one of your shields in attic, they got to get through the Rooney. They got to get through the ADSs. And then nine times out of 10, your, your nade is like gone by then, unless your team is coordinated and you guys have like six flashes, right? But nine times out of 10 teams are not that coordinated, especially in ranked. So Aruni's really good at protecting your utility and just and just wasting theirs, wait and wasting their time, and you get that non-stop flowing intel. Okay, two guys in trophy, boom. Nomad just threw two flashes. Finca's nading. Like it's just and I like the fact that they regenerate. Cause once an Aruni is burnt, it's like a 45 second timer, and then you can bring it right back up. S tier, man. I fucking love Aruni. Okay, Flores is an interesting one because I think Flores' straight up utility is good. The only problem I have with Flores is how slow paced that operator is. I feel like if you want to attack properly in Siege, everything's got to be fast. The problem with Flores is just how slow paced it is. The guy has four drones. If you count his two drones, that's six fucking drones. 
and his RC uh, RC cars move like one mile an hour. So I mean, if you get all your Flores drones down, you got like forty five seconds left. Like that, I, I do think he's great when you're attacking uh, Oregon downstairs and you want to get any type of shields. I do think Oregon or uh, Flores is a really good operator. I'm gonna throw my boy at A tier. Okay, Thunderbird. You guys all know Thunderbird's like my favorite operator of all time. She's literally game breaking and she needs a nerf. And I can tell you exactly how and what they need to do to nerf Thunderbird. As of right now, she has three Kona stations that heal 20 HP every, I think it's 25 seconds or 30 seconds. I think it's every 30 seconds. That is like, we're talking hundreds of HP over the span of a round. Give her two Kona stations. Don't nerf her gun. Her gun's great. Everybody loves her gun. Don't nerf her gun. Oh, no. Well, they actually are nerfing her gun, so that might be problematic. Um, she's still going to be a great operator, though, with those heals. And uh, just give her two Konas and make it to where instead of doing 20 HP heals, it does like 15. I think that'd be fair. Mmm. Getting into Osa here. Osa, fuck. Here's the issue I have with Osa. I just feel like if a team has impact grenades, which is so fucking common... Your Osa is basically rendered useless. I mean, let's say you're attacking like coastline and you want to put an Osa on service door, like outside service door. If they have a Malusi, boom, that's one Osa gone. You, you put your other one down, boom, the Osa's gone. Like, I just hate how breakable and easy it is to break. I do think she's a good operator, though. I like a lot of Osa strats I've been seeing lately. I'm going to throw her at A tier. I think A tier is very fair, very respectful. Osa's really good, man. Okay, now we have Thorn. Thorn is kind of like an underrated trap operator, I feel like. I, I'm going to honestly say Thorn might actually be one of the best trap operators in the game as of Year 7 Season 2. We, we talked about the Legion nerf. We talked about the Ella nerf. They had their times. Thorn's really good right now. I don't think she's, like, great. I don't think she's bad. I like the fact that you get intel from her, um, from her Thorns. Occasionally, you can pick up a kill off of them. It's pretty rare, though. Um, it's mainly intel based and you have a shield and a good gun man her gun is pretty fucking freaky okay dude this is one of the my favorite operators in the game right now dude right now bro azami is running shit i dude i fucking love azami ubisoft i feel like the a lot of the a lot of the dlc operators ubisoft has been releasing lately have been letdowns if i'm being completely honest and unbiased yo shrimp thank you for the prime sub if I'm being completely honest and unbiased, a lot of the DLC operators have been letdowns lately, but Azami was not a letdown. Azami is such a fucking... It's like, if you have good map knowledge, you know how to throw... You know how to you know how to line up your Azamis. You know the type of line of sights you want. You know the type of angles you want. Azami's one of the best operators in the game. If you play against a good Azami player on Cafe, and he's holding CL, and he's got Wamai on his team, helping him out, throwing Wamai's on his window... You're not killing Azami. Like, uh, Azami's crazy, dude. Last, but certainly not least, Sense. Sense, okay. I think Sense is one of the best operators in the game for one specific thing. Setting up plants. I think I think if you have a Sense and a Ying and you're attacking upstairs on Consulate with like an Osa and a Nomad and a fucking Capiteo, you're getting that fucking Diffuser down. That Diffuser's going down. The issue I have with Sense is I'm not crazy about his gun. It's not that bad. I'll honestly say that. His gun is not that bad. It's not in the caliber of, like, you know, S tier. Um, I'm going to honestly give Sense... I'm going to give Sense B. I think I think B's fair. I think Sense has a lot of potential. Um, we're going to see, man. I'm sure we're going to learn new strats with Sense over, over, the, over the years. But uh, that, that, is my, that is my tier list, man. Chat, let me know in the Twitch chat right now, is this a W or L tier list? If you watched this video on YouTube, let me know, man. Was this a good tier list? Did you guys agree with most of my takes or did you disagree? Dude, I've been talking for like 45 minutes nonstop. I've been talking for like 45 minutes nonstop. Let's see what chat says. Let's see what chat says. Yo, Jinxy Papa, thank you for the tier one. Wet Soxy, thank you for the tier one. Shrimp, thank you for the prime. Let's see what my chat says. I'm seeing L's. L L L L L L L L L L L L Bro, oh how no, bro, bro, L L L. Chat, you guys are so toxic, dude. Chat, you guys are so toxic, dude. All right, man. Well, that's a wrap for that video, man. That's gonna be a W fucking video. I'm not gonna cap. That's gonna be a W video. Chat, I was uh, I pulled up the stream on my Xbox because I like looking at chat. But uh, all right.
W fucking uh, video, man. I think that'll be a really good video. I was pretty happy with most of the choices uh, I made in that. Uh, we got Face It starting in like nine minutes. So I'm probably going to chill on YouTube and like eat real quick. That's what I did last Face It.